hi guys welcome back to our channel today we're going to be filming about some of the things that we found very shocking as new immigrants in canada and um i'm sure you find it very exciting but before we go into all of that i'd like to say a very big thank you to everyone that has subscribed to our channel thank you for all the support all the love you guys have shown us since we started this channel thank you so much please continue to share our videos continue to support us and We'll continue to you know turn out more videos for you guys so without further ado let's just get right into today's video so the first thing i'm going to be talking about is the cold i know a lot of people already hear stories about how cold canada is but take it from someone that's lived here for almost three years now i landed in February um, if you've seen my immigration story you know this and you guys I landed when it was about minus 35 degrees so imagine how cold that is like I landed and I and I had frostbite it was terrible and <laughs> nothing prepares you for that cold honestly so I'd like to say that we lived in Nigeria and I'm going to be making a lot of comparisons between Nigeria and here and Right now we're in summer and it's about 32 degrees. So in Calgary, this the weather can be quite bipolar. Right now it's really, really hot. It's as, it's as hot as it is in Lagos. I know that there are some people that are looking for air conditioners here, and air conditioners are sold out right now. So so yeah, it can be it can be really extreme. So when it's hot, it's really hot, and when it's cold, it's really cold. So it's not that bad um, when it's cold, of course just have to layer and when it's hot you dress just the way i'm dressed lightly so the next thing i'm going to be talking about is maternity leave hmm. maternity leave can go as far as 18 months in canada um so so you actually have a choice as to how long you want to go for you can either go for 12 months or 18 months and it's paid um, so how it works is um, before you get pregnant you must have worked for a certain number of hours I don't think there, there's any other eligibility criteria except for just the number of hours so once you're ready to go on leave you just need to apply um, for that and you're all good to go and like I said earlier it is paid that's just the best of both worlds so I mean you can always decide to go back to work before the 12 months or before the 18 months if you choose but I'm just saying that the maximum you can go for is 12 or 18, depends on you. So yeah, that's that's how it works. I've never heard of that before coming here. I didn't know such a thing happened because you know how it is in Lagos. Once you have your baby, I think it's three months, you're back to work. You have to go and sort out your daycare and all of that. But yeah, that's a good thing. And yeah, another thing that, you know, shocked me when I landed was how the houses are set up here um so firstly i mean rent here is paid monthly and um i found it um shocking that most of the houses here come with a refrigerator they come with a dishwasher and they come with a washer and dryer now it's possible that um i mean a very spa apartment your apartment may not have a washer and dryer in the apartment it may be a shared one but they will still provide it somehow for you that's something that i found shocking for me, what I find, some of the things I found uh, surprising is number one, when you want to buy a car here, well, just even going to a dealership, I noticed that the way the cars are parked in the dealership is like anybody sort of has access to it. So you can just walk up there and all the cars are parked without, you know, fences or any form of, you know, security around them. They're just, they just parked like tons of cars, hundreds of cars are just right there in the dealership. So I've, I've always wondered about that. And, I'm thinking is it safe like i'm sure the cars have insurance and everything but that's that still surprises me secondly is so when you get a job here i was surprised that nobody asks you to bring your certificates like bring your bachelor's degree you know everything that you use to apply for the job everything you claim you have for the job nobody really asks to see it you know i mean because you could have been lying or something so nobody asks to see any of the certificates um so yeah, that was that was also you know not normal for me because where I come from, people want to there's there like an HR file where every staff's documentation is is in there like your certificates, your whatever degree you have, whatever certification you claim to have, 
everything is there, but there's nothing like that yet. Another thing I wanted to talk about was how, you know how in Lagos, mm. is this even um, Nigeria wide or just Lagos, how they'll tell you that um, a graduate must be, well, mm. for you to get an entry level job, you must be 23, 25. Mm -hmm. That's but there's nothing like, there's that, nothing like that here. So you know how, so back home, a, a, a big company will post a job mm -hmm. and then you see candidates must be between say 24 and 28 to apply. Six. I'm like, really? Like, yeah. that's that weird. But yeah, they don't really care. Nobody, they're not going to ask for your age when they're interviewing. I think it's actually illegal for them to ask for this sort of information. They don't care what tribe or what yeah. religion you are or whether you're married or not. So that's, that's like, they're focused more on your skills, which makes sense, than your age or any of those. All those other yeah, your skills, your experience, and mm -hmm. all those things. So nobody really cares about your credentials. You can get a job here without having credentials. No, they care about your credentials. <laughs> no, but, no, well, they care, they don't care about um. I was seeing it. Seeing your credentials, actually, that's what I mean. So they don't care about seeing your credentials. So, but, but I mean, if they don't care about seeing, that means they don't care about it, really. So. Not like yeah, they're going to ask you. You always, you always get the chance to prove yourself at the job. So, yeah. yes, they just rely more on that than you know, whatever you have on mm -hmm. paper. Mm -hmm. yeah. Another thing that I found quite shocking was how people here just mind their business. Like, you can literally live with someone, not live with someone like you may not know your neighbor for up to a year, you can be living beside someone and you won't know who that person is. You would never meet the person, you never speak to the person. Like, it's that bad. Like, people just go about their business and that's it. Nobody, nobody's in your face, nobody. It's so bad that when we had our baby, I'm sure, I feel like our neighbors didn't know until one night they just had the baby crying. So yeah, people mind their business a lot again. It can get really boring here, especially if you're here alone. Um, so what I'd advise in that case is um, people who are here alone should try as much as possible to have a community. That's the only way I think you can survive the loneliness. Um, the activities here, I, I know it may seem like, oh, it's boring and everything, but I found out that you have to intentionally go out and, you know, have fun. The fun won't come and meet you in your house. So, um, and to make it, I mean, the more the merrier, right? So, if you have a community and you have people that you know you can hang with, you know, you have stuff to do every time. So, yeah, it can get really boring if you're alone. And yeah, having a community is really, really important. This point, hmm, I've lost count of how many people have come here. And I've had to go back to their home country because they could not cope with, you know, managing without help. Um, I found out that here, everything is DIY. You do everything yourself. Like you, maybe in your um, country, you're used to having help around or a maid or something. There's nothing like that here. That's not to say that you can't have a nanny, but just ready to pay them the minimum wage. Here, you have to do everything yourself managing work, if you have a business, if you have a family to take care of, if you have kids. It can be a lot actually and um, I don't think people say this enough about living abroad. Um, yeah, it can take a toll on you, on your mental health and that's why it's very important to, you know, um, have a work-life balance. So another point about what I find surprising here is that, so if you are driving here, you would have to worry about um, winter tires and like your seasonal tires so when it's winter you have to change your tires to you know, what we call winter tires because of the cold the winter tires are supposed to have a better grip on the floor so so that the car doesn't slip and slide and then you get into an accident so when it's winter you change into a winter tire and then when it's summer you change back into an all season tire or like a summer tire or something so that one is where i come from we don't do that like one tire is going to so the next thing that we that I found shocking is uh, how PDA is just all over the place here. Um, they don't really care if you are looking at them. They don't care where they are. They will do what they have to do wherever they find themselves. 
um, you could be at the bus station and you just see two random people locking lips and everybody's just Mind there you. minding their business like nothing is happening so i mean that used to shock me initially but i think i've gotten i've gotten used to it next thing is how you know you go to the grocery store maybe something is five dollars and then you go to the till and then your receipt just shows you maybe seven bucks yeah. so here if, if something is um, if, some, if, if, if a price is stated on the item on the aisle it's going to be different from what you're going to pay at the till and that's because there's something that's called um, GST which is goods and services tax so yeah that's something to keep in mind don't assume that what you're seeing on the aisle is what you're going to yeah. pay at the till and I guess the why that one is surprising is the the price you see on the on the aisle doesn't have that tax included yet. Yeah. So that tax is usually calculated when it goes to the till to actually pay. So if total it's what a hundred dollars of worth of items that you buy. So when you get to the till to pay, then I'll calculate the tax and add it to that hundred dollars. So it's a hundred and something dollars. So it's not exactly yeah. you know, what you see that you pay. You said you know, it's what you see plus tax that you end up exactly. paying. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. And another thing is um, how health insurance works here or the health system um, I like to refer to when we had our baby because that's like our, our first major interaction with the health system here and uh, both have work and we both have work insurance so of course that came to play when you know we needed to you know have a baby to the hospital actually we didn't have to pay anything because we have um, health insurance. So there is there's what we call AHS and because we are in Alberta that's why it's called AHS that just means Alberta Health Services. Yes. So Alberta Health Services is the government's health plan so it covers everybody whether you have work insurance or not. So now there are a couple of things that um, Alberta Health Insurance will cover and then some of the things that AHS does not cover your work insurance is supposed to you know augment and cover it. Yeah. And I believe if giving birth to a baby is going to be covered by you know our better health services because I imagine it would be unfair for somebody for you to say you are not going to you know cover someone's service because they don't have a job or don't have a work health insurance. So yeah. so the, the healthcare system is very I mean it works. And I would also like to say that because um where we're coming from it sounded really strange to me when I got here throughout the pregnancy when I had to go for tests, um, I had to, you know, get blood work and all those things. I didn't have to pay anything. I didn't pay one dollar. Everything was free completely. And, and, and I mean, the service is good as well. So you would think that, oh, because, you know, um, we are not paying anything, they That's get like shitty service. Exactly. But, but there were good service. good service and, you know, we didn't have to pay anything. So, yeah, those are the things that. Um, we both found quite shocking as new immigrants. Well, some of the things that we found shocking as new immigrants in Canada. I know there is a long list. Um, we can't go through all the list, so this video is not too long. But we'd really like to hear from you guys. Um, you know, if you are, if you have cultural shocks just like we did, um, please leave it in the comment section. I feel like these kinds of things are very important for people to learn. People that are planning to come to Canada so that they can know what even, to expect even if you are you know you are not in canada if you move from your own country to somewhere else even if it was years ago let's let's just some of the things that you found a bit surprising like yeah. the way they do things wherever you are now is probably different from how yeah, you used yeah. to do things back home yeah. so let's get the conversation going there i'm sure yeah. there'll be some interesting ones that yeah. we are going to play yeah. up there yeah. and if you watch the video to this point please give it a thumbs up please. subscribe to please. our channel so you can get more videos please. And um, yeah, comment, leave a comment in the comment section below. And um, we'll talk to you in the next one. Peace. Bye.